Hey everybody, I'm Charlie Gillespie and you're watching the Permanent Rain Press. Hi everyone, it's Chloe with the Permanent Rain Press. Today I am happy to be joined by Charlie Gillespie. How's it going? Woo! It's going good. How are you doing? <laughs> it's going well, you know, as best that can be. Tell me, how are you holding up and keeping busy during these times? Uh, well, for instance, right now I'm up visiting Newfoundland uh, with my siblings. We've been hiking the the uh, the national parks. Uh, we're going wheel watching. You know, we're just I don't know. Spending we're spending a lot of time with family, and we're spending a lot of time out in nature. So it's been it's been it's been calm, but it's been fun. Well, you do have an exciting project upcoming. Let's talk a bit about it. Julian the Phantoms. You star as Luke. What details can you share about your character? What can I share about Luke? Uh, okay, so Luke, I'll just start off. He's a kid from, 19, from the 90s, basically. And on his 17th year, him and his folks, uh, the rest of his bandmates, they all, um, they all die. And then they come back to life in 2020. And, uh, but what happened is like, this kid is like this, this little rocker, right? He, he wants to, he wants to make music that everybody in the world is going to hear. He wants, he's so passionate about it. It lives through his soul. And so when he dies, it cuts that dream short. But when he comes back to life, you know, he gets a second chance at that with, with Julie and the Phantoms. And, and you get to see the rest fold out when, when it comes around. But music's been a part of your life for a while now. How old were you when you picked up your first instrument and thought, you know, music is something I'm interested in? Depends on the instrument. I mean, <laughs> I guess the first instrument would have been, well, I mean, it would have been the spoons. Come on. Classic, uh, probably on the winter, winter time or whatever my brothers would have been jamming out. And, and we were just start, you start with the spoons, kind of grow to like a bigger drum and then you move on to like, the violin, the guitar. We just uh, instruments has been have been like a big, big part of my family for, for forever. Like um, my mom and, and dad really put a lot of emphasis on us rehearsing and and making sure that we we had that to play. And then it turned into a passion for all of us, and so we all pursue it in a way that's just you know, it, it fills the soul with so much joy and um, and uh, and yeah. So I've been I, I've been playing for a little while, but I guess the guitar. You know, I've been playing acoustic guitar around the bonfire for the longest. And then for this show, I started picking up the electric guitar. And so I, uh, I started doing like gigs around Los Angeles, uh, wherever I could go an open mic. I'm like, oh, I'm there, I'm there. I do like two in the night sometimes where I'd go like to one place and then I have to travel all across Los Angeles down to like the next one. And it was really fun. I got to meet a really cool community and I got to really dive into the my character uh, because that's what he would have grown up in obviously more in the 90s but so there's there's a few changes there that happened but it's uh so so it's been fun i uh i think everybody should should try to master something like a like a a musical instrument that's awesome about like you mentioned you um went around to d play different gigs like that's really how you embody your character i know on instagram you called you yourself and your siblings the gillespie five so <laughs> <laughs> you found that did you yeah <laughs> yeah well we um when we were growing up my mom made us a little band uh the gillespie five very original name uh <laughs> but we uh yeah, we'd go and we'd tour around, uh, tour around the province, just do like local gigs wherever we can. And uh, my grandmother loved, 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 loved that. So, you know, it was as much as it was for everybody, it was a big present for her. She, she used to just get a kick out of it. So the show, uh, Julian the Phantoms, we can see from what's been released as themes of friendship, teamwork, confidence. Yeah. What relationship dynamics can viewers expect to see from this cast? you you find family and friends you know that's uh that's the best thing that happened with us in the real life but also with us in the show and you know obviously the three boys uh they were they'd known each other you know for i guess a couple of decades at this point but they um they were all kind of outcasts in the 90s and then they, get, they came together and created a band called sunset curve and then um you know, we get to do that with Julie. You know, she gets to, she deals with a bit of loss. You know, obviously us, we dealt with a, a lot of loss too. And and the, when we start bending, blending together, that's that's really where you find the soul of our show. It's it's the fr friendship. It's the family friendship through friends that that's just so Julie and the Phantoms. So 
So yourself, Madison, Jeremy, Owen must have had so much fun on set. What are some activities you did together to build that camaraderie? Too many. We had too much fun on set. I got to tell you that. We would do, we'd do anything and all of, all of the above. Like, um, I mean, we do like we'd be gaming out. We'd go hiking. We I brought them skating down in Burbank, which was really fun because, I mean, Maddie said she skated before, fine, but she's not that good. <laughs> and Owen was Owen was funny. Owen had to hold on to the board the whole time, but you know he's from Oklahoma. It makes sense. But no, it's like, uh, we just we just goofed around most of the time. You know, we go hi like uh, hiking is a big part of of who I am and what I do. So I I really liked it when we could go up onto the hill, the grouse grind. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, the classic. That's a classic, and uh, and we did a few more. But you know, just messed around the way the way a bunch of friends would. You know, we had a you know we had a couple of airsoft guns in our. Oh, I'm not gonna say that story. Uh, no, I'll say it. Okay, we you know and had a couple of airsoft guns in the in our apartment, and we we just we just flew around. You know, it's like it's I don't know. I we never had college experiences, and so it was it was really it was something like that almost. And it's really nice, like you mentioned. It seems like you all gelled together really well. Um, obviously, Kenny Ortega, he's a visionary. He helped put you all together. Oh. So working with him, what was that experience like? Uh. I, I think I've said this in another interview, but it was just like, it was a master class for work. It was um, a true experience of a lifetime that, that really built me up as well and that I'm going to use forever. It's like that guy has lived through so much and, and he just is, is truly passionate about what he's doing. He's truly passionate about artists in general. He's truly passionate about um, about people and, and, and telling a story about love and, and, and it just, it, it's a, a, a very bright testimony to who he is as a, as a person as well, because whatever he does on the set is, is also a reflection of who he is and, and he is an amazing person. And, and I, I just, um, you know, I hope to be more like him in the future because he is, uh, he's a visionary in, in my, in my eyes, at least. And then you also got to work with Boo Boo Stewart, who stars as Willie. He was obviously a main character in Disney's Descendants. So was having him around, he's been through this experience. And Twilight. Yeah, and Twilight. <laughs> Can't forget Twilight, Seth Clearwater. Can't forget Twilight, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was it a nice uh, support kind of system for you all? Yeah, Boo Boo was a really cool dude. Um, Boo Boo came in around... Um, around our rehearsal stages down in Burbank, which were, which was really cool. We got to meet him, got to hang out with him. And, and, and yeah, you know, if, if we had questions, he was always open to, to answering them. But what was really cool is like, we really got to, to figure this out together as, as, a, as, as the four that we were too, you know, it's like we, uh, uh, anything, anything that we wanted to ask, we, we would ask it, 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 that environment that Kenny, Kenny creates is just, nobody has a bad idea. Nobody has a bad question. So the band is from the nineties, 1995 to be exact. I had to Google nineties fashion trends. So you can tell <laughs> me if any of these items appear uh, in this show. Okay. Overalls with one strap hanging down. I wanted overalls. I wanted overalls, but no, there's no overalls. Okay. Uh, but I can tell you right now that if you go on my Instagram, which I know you did there, you'll see a bunch of overalls in there. <laughs> you must have been disappointed that that one, if it's clearly making its comeback in 2020, how come they couldn't include that in the show? I know, I know. Soyon, we'll get you next time. <laughs> Soyon's our costume designer. She did a killer job. Leather biker jackets. Oh, of course. I think Jeremy was wearing one in the promo as well. He um, does. Turtlenecks. I think uh, none. None. I mean, the boys don't wear the turtlenecks from the nineties, but I think you'll see a turtleneck. I think Jada maybe wears a turtleneck at some point. Okay. Baggy jeans. I wear skinny jeans. Um, Jada wears skinny jeans. Maddie wears baggy jeans at one point. Okay. Windbreakers. Oh my God. Uh, I know, I mean, I, I wish I had mine on right now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, no. Snapback hats. Yes, we do okay. see snapback hats. And graphic or band tees. 
Well, yes. graphic and banties, I think you can see like my character wears that the entire series. Yeah. That's like my outfit. I think I saw Rush, Nirvana, and oh, Rush. MTV. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Yeah. So no, pretty the, true the, to the times, I would say, based on that assessment. What was really cool about Soyon, and this is just like a little fun fact, is like what we are so the video that you would have seen, the little promo thing, was actually filmed at our auditions, most of it, right? Until you turn into the studio stuff. And so all the outfits that we're wearing, like I have my cutoff, uh, my uh, my jeans and all that kind of stuff. Jer has his like leather jacket, Owen has his pink hoodie, and it's like uh like and, and Madison as well, like, but we all like we really Soyan was like, I love what you were wearing when you got the role. I love who you were kind of creating with the character. Can we take that and run with it? And we were like, oh yeah, 100%. So we all kind of, so she really developed the, the, the outfits with us, which was really, really a, a cool testimony to her. But, um, uh, but, but yeah, no, the, uh, you should have seen, we try to get so many different graphic tees and, uh, and, 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 uh, you know, just cause you have to get stuff approved, you know, somewhere not approved, somewhere approved, but some of the ones that we get on the show, I am so pleased with like that rush shirt. I, I, I tried to steal, I, I couldn't get it, but it's so good. <laughs> Maybe if there's more to come, you can read the wardrobe department and say, I really need that. <laughs> that's I my, need that's, that rush shirt. <laughs> the only reason you're like, the only reason I'll return is if you give me that shirt finally. It's a key item because that's what we like died with and pooped in with, with yeah. right? So those are like, that's like a key, key item to the show, so. And that's great. What, like you mentioned, um, your costume designer kind of building who you are into your characters. And so that's on, baby. The original. Yeah, shout out to her. Yeah. Um, so speaking about your young career so far, you've been in a nice mix of kind of projects and genres from action, crime, drama, thriller, musical, even a music video. So what do you look for in a new project? I look for something that's exciting, something that's gonna that I'm gonna be really excited about doing, obviously. But so uh, I like I I I would really love to try telling East Coast story, uh, something from the Maritimes, something from you know where I'm from. I, I love a hockey story, uh, just because that's what I grew up in. Um, there's, yeah, if I had to say one thing that I would love to do right now, I'd love to do like like a World Junior or like a hockey kind of story going in there just because it's 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 a it's a part of what I grew up with it's a part of so many millions of people the way with they the way that they grew up as well and and just not a story that's told enough and I just want to I'm I can watch a movie every single day and be fine with it and don't think it's like a waste of time because I love movies and I just I would love to watch a hockey movie you know back to your roots hopefully something like that comes up in the future yes You've been to um, places like Vietnam and Chile across North America. So, you know, where is a country or city you haven't been to yet that you would hope to in the future? Well, I started working with uh, the Mari Nostrum uh, Foundation down in Ecuador. And right now we're trying to um, limit uh, shark finning uh, through the Galapagos and through uh, the chains that the sharks are roaming through. So my next big trip, I'm hoping to go down to the Galapagos and uh, be able to, the, pro the project is to hopefully tag the sharks and be able to see where they're swimming around in, um, in the island chains that they're going through so we can limit those areas from fishing boats. And that's, that's pretty much where my next trip would, would be, hopefully, fingers crossed, you know? Yeah, when the travel restrictions are lifted, that's up next. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. When you are back home in Dieppe, New Brunswick, what are some of your favorite spots to visit? Favorite spots to visit, eat, all that. Okay, first of all, favorite spot to visit is always the Bay of Fundy. Go through Alma or even St. Martin's, but we always go Alma. You'll have uh, some food at like, at like the Tipsy Lobster, or you can even go to the new, uh, um, there's like this, there's like a few new breweries out there too, but definitely the, my favorite trail is Wolf Point. And then if you want to do a day trail, go down to Wolf Creek and, and camp there. It's very, very fun. So definitely. Alma, or, or come, come to my hometown, Dieppe, man. You got the Petakodiak, which I have a view every single morning and, and night. I can watch the tidal board coming in and, and uh, go to Bennix, get some ice cream, go to Shidiac, jump off the pier. I don't know. I, there's, too, there's too much to decide from. I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> You gave a good listing, so if anyone good. is going to Dieppe, uh, or maybe Charlie can be your tour guide, it seems like I you've will, been around. I will, I'll rent the bus, I'll rent the bus and everything, I'll be like, to your left is Heinz, to your right. Yeah. So, <laughs> What's to the right? <laughs> okay. Now, who are a couple of artists you are listening to on your summer playlist? 
Oh, the band Camino right now. Uh, do you know who they are? Yes. My right. sister Gemma. told me who they are. Oh, I forgot. What's the song? What's there's a song I know See I have through, on my iPod. Haunted. No, I just okay look they are such a like they're like a modern rock band that I freaking love I just I love their energy I think it's very modern but they still have that soul in the music which is just I really appreciate yeah do you know the kooks amazing band I think they started in like 2005 or whatever but they uh they're 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 very fun what's well. their best record on the kooks uh you mean like the album I, I, everything I, I know everything <laughs> like like what what they have is what their energy comes through is like it's 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 very like classic like english sound i find but they have they have a lot of color in their music like a lot of harmonies and then they also have like a, ver a variety of instruments that they're playing with which just um totally embellishes their sound and so it's something that's not uh that's not so common like it's not a common sound i find you know, here on our radio as much but uh, but my brother, who's living in uh, Manchester right now, he's just like, he's nuts for them. And so he showed me them uh, just not too long ago. And I'm like, man, yeah, I, I vibe with them hard. Um, the Lemon Twigs, another great band. Um, Dirty Honey. Oh, my God. Go check out Dirty Honey. They are a rock band straight from like the 70s, but like they're my age today. So definitely check out Dirty Honey. Uh, I think the Rolling Sevens is my favorite jam from that. Rolling Sevens, badass song. Yeah. Lots of good picks there. Have to check them out after. And our signature question for you, if you could be any ice yeah. cream flavor, which would you Woo! be and why? Can I be a banana split? Yeah, okay. I know it's like, because it just, you get the... You get the strawberry, which is my favorite. You get the chocolate, but you also get the vanilla, and then you get the bananas, and you get the sauces on top, and then you get like pineapple. Oh, banana split by far. Yeah. Or they have um, they have the new coffee crisp blizzard at Dairy Queen. I haven't tried it yet. I really want to try that. <laughs> I think you need to try it first before you say I want to be that ice cream. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. I agree. <laughs> There's like well, a rule banana of split. Here is a nice kind of compromise there. So uh, that's Not all I bad. have for you, Charlie. Thank you for taking the time to chat. Thank really you. appreciate it. Make yeah. sure to catch Charlie and Julie and the Phantom September 10th on Netflix. And we will see you next time. Thank you so much. Eh? Cheers.